Let's go to Dante in White Plains. Dante. Hey, guys. First time, long time. Thanks for taking my call. You got it. What's up? Michael, you've given a lot of reasons why the Yankees and Boone haven't met expectations over the last couple of years. You know, I have to say, I don't necessarily disagree with anything you've said. I think it's factually true. But here's my problem. I mean, is it part of the manager's job is that when things are going sideways is to steer the team out of the skid? And, you know, for the last three years, Boone hasn't proven he's able to do that. And then he falls back on his Boone speak blindly defending the indefensible plays. And, but yeah, well, first, should, first of all, Dante, don't no, don't don't, don't let don't hang up on Dante. I want to talk with him. So, Dante, I never explained. I have not explained why they have hit the skids. I'm explaining how Boone reacts to it. That the reason that Boone hasn't been able to steer the team out of it, the team's not good enough right now. There's no way to steer them out of it. They don't have enough hitting. Their pitching is the worst pitching in baseball since June 15th. That's on Boone. He can't steer them out of it. No, I didn't. Well, no, I didn't say specifically just this three weeks, but this isn't new. It's not like we've never seen this, and it's been great for the last three years. Every time this team seems to go sideways, it never seems to turn around. That's kind of my yeah, But I, I, I hear what you're saying, Dante, about- but it's not like everybody's hitting and everybody's pitching and it's going sideways. They, they, are, they are devastated by injury. And that's not an excuse. That's a reason, whether you want to admit it or not. And they can't get out of the skid. They're, they're, they're not good enough right now. I mean, I'm going to tell you this, Dante. What happened on Saturday when they won 14-4, to that's the aberration. They don't have enough offense to win games. Well, I get that. I mean, I, I get that their offense is weak. The pitching is its the same guys have been winning all year. It's not like they went down. They're all there. I get it. The bullpen's off, and I know Efroth will come back, and Trevino will come back, and, and Hamilton will come back, and you'll get some help. But these starters are basically, you know, they're there. They're your guys. As far as the offense goes, and I know you've used the, you know, Dominguez is not there, and that, that kind of hurt their backup plan for Stanton. But, you know, no one knew when Stanton was going to go down. Stanton could have went down April 1st. Dominguez wouldn't have been ready. I mean, who was on your bench? I mean, I mean, Jemai Jones? I mean, you remember a time when the Yankees had Tim Raines I on the bench it. or Dallas Strawberry I get on the Dante. bench or Raul Labanez so, on the but bench. But let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Is that an Aaron yeah. Boone problem or is that a front office problem? It is not an Aaron Boone problem. There's a lot of blame to go around, but we're looking to point fingers and it, it just goes around. Well, I mean, Hal's got to wake up and say, Brian, I gave you $300 million. And Aaron, you got $300 million like a ball player. Can't you guys figure this out? And every year, they can't figure it out. And when things go sideways, it's just like, well, uh, geez, well, we got all these good reasons. And there are reasons, I get it. But at some point, like Don knows this, is there any accountability? Ever? Well, I think if they don't make it this year, you'll see some accountability, Dante. Yeah, uh, I, I, listen, I don't like the bench. Um, there's only so much, and I know that the, when Boone first took over, it was next man up, and they always found a pretty good player, like a carpenter or whatever. They haven't been finding that player. They're bringing in J.D. Davis. I think he's one for 13. You, you're bringing in a guy that was designated for assignment by the Oakland Athletics. So whether you want to admit it or not, until they get healthy, they're not good enough. Now, the key, even with healthy, is D.J. LeMayu going to be a 170 hitter? Is Gleyber Torres going to hit 230? Is Anthony Volpe's average going to continue to drop? If all of those things are yes, that's then they got a problem because then there are too many holes to fill. Simply too many holes to fill. Some people have to start playing at least close to the back of their baseball card. At least close to it. I mean, Gleyber Torres hit 25 home runs last year. He can't hit this year. There's no slug at all in D.J. LeMay, who's one of your corner infielders. If it wasn't for Ben Rice, they'd be in a real bad spot. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of it is just uh, the, the luck of the draw. Like, you brought up Carpenter. Carpenter had, was sitting on a couch. Yep. And then he, he comes in and starts raking, and, and you're winning. And then so you figure, all right, maybe, maybe J.D. Davis, who actually, you know, hadn't played in a week or so, but it was on a major league roster that season, maybe I'll catch lightning in a bottle, and you haven't. Like, it seems like you're kind of grasping at straws, and some years it works out. Everything comes together, and you find a couple of real cool players that you didn't think you were going to have that help you. But for the most part, at least recently, Michael, he, he's coming up empty with some of these chances that he's taken. Yeah. Now, it's still early with J.D. Davis, but let's be honest, Michael, at this point, 
You know, I don't I don't know if he's ever going to be what Carpenter was when they got him. No. Or if he's going to be a viable option. No. They they need to get their people back. They do. And now as for the pitching, I think that what they did was they pitched over their head. Even Matt Blake said that for two months. They were unbelievable. And that took pressure off the bullpen. Then all of a sudden, the offense stopped scoring. The pitchers put more pressure on themselves. The outings shortened. And then you exposed the bullpen. It became a domino effect. So now they start a three-game series against Tampa. It's a pretty big series. And then they finish it off with three in Baltimore against the Orioles the first half of the season. You know what? If you go two and four in these six games, you're going to the All-Star break thinking, what's going to happen? Six and 16 over 22 games, and now six big games. And you have seven out of ten. Seven out of the next ten games you play are against the Tampa Bay Rays. And they're 40 and 42, or 44 and 46.